So I did a couple of videos where I used this sheet of paper as a gaming mat. Sure, it did the job, but it's kind of bland and it's getting a bit ratty now. Time to make myself some proper gaming mats. And since the ones I need are both small and cheap, I made three. Grassland, ash waste, and desert. Now, making these is really simple. RFD Hobby, Mel the Terrain Tutor, and Eric's Hobby Workshop all made something similar. Links in the description. I just added a couple of twists of my own. For a backing material, I used regular outdoor canvas. Unlike the plastic bed canvas, you will get some stains on the underside, but allow me to show you a chart of how many sheets I give about that. I wanted the canvas to be nice and flat, so I ironed it. Now, this will surprise my parents, but I do own an iron and know how to use it. In this case, you don't really need to worry too much about getting it perfectly smooth. You're just going to slap stuff on it, not wear it to a court hearing. Just get rid of any large creases. With the canvas flat, I laid it over a large plastic sheet, which is just a bin liner I cut open. This made sure nothing stuck to the table. At this point, I clamped it down. You can use tape or any other way you can think of to hold down the canvas. You just want to make sure it's uh, stretched out as possible. Next, I drew on the area of my mat. In my case, it's 72 cm by 48 cm, because I want the same proportions as a 6x4 foot table. You want your guidelines to stick out a bit out of the way, so you can still see them later after you've ganged this up. For the body of the mat, I used this polyfill acrylic caulk, but any paintable acrylic caulk will work. Squeeze some out into a container, and add in a dash of water and some acrylic paint, and mix it all until it's one color. To add some texture, I mixed in some baking powder. You can also use fine sand, but I thought baking powder would work better for 10mm scale gaming. Just be aware that if you use sand, the end result will be thicker and heavier. With the forbidden ice cream ready, I put on some latex gloves, dump in them with water and spread the paste on the canvas with my hands. There is no science to this, just have fun smooshing it around. Unfortunately, the YouTube audio library doesn't have a selection of 1970s fetish movie music like I wanted for this shot, but I'm sure you can use your imagination. For now, you're just looking to get a nice even cover over all the area you marked out earlier. Keeping your gloves wet will make it a lot easier. To add a bit of extra texture, I viciously teabag the acrylic with a damp cloth, but this step is optional. If you want a smooth surface, you can also do that now with a smoothing tool. I left each mat to cure overnight, then started dry brushing them. If you wanted to, you could also paint features directly on them, but for these three I just wanted a fairly featureless plane I could do up with the rain later. You can go fairly heavy here, and dry brushing reveals some of the textures that aren't really visible when it's just one color. At this point, I cut out all three mats. The ash waste and the desert mats were done. They just needed a clear coat to protect them. They looked okay, rolled up nicely, and felt good. The grassland on the other hand was obviously not very grassy. To get that nice grassy area, I spread some diluted PVA glue and sprinkled flock on. This is my homemade flock. I was thinking a few weeks ago of how making your own materials lets you experiment. Case in point. If I had to buy my flock at market rates, I wouldn't be using it this liberally on something I'm not sure will work. Once the PVA cured, I sprayed the flock again with a mixture of surgical alcohol and water. Dripped in more PVA to seal it and left it to dry overnight. And that's when things went a bit pear shaped. First off, some of the edges had warped. I'm still hoping they'll flatten out by getting rolled and unrolled eventually, but I could probably have avoided this by applying the flock before cutting out the mat. The main problem is the white stuff that had appeared all over the mat. After some Google and a couple of railway modeling forums, I found out that PVA glue does that if you leave it to cure in a high humidity or low temperature like I had. To fix this, I rehydrated the problem areas and broke out my hair dryer. Yes, I own one. Not for my hair for obvious reasons. This kind of helped, but it's a fair bit of work to add for no reason, so be careful with your drying if you do this. I'm still not 100% happy with this mat to be honest, so I'll probably redo this and either flock it all over or just paint the grass on, as even if the flocking had been perfect, it still wouldn't roll as nicely as the others. Still, it should serve for now. The other two I'm definitely happy with, and you will probably be seeing them around a fair bit. If you want to see some of the terrain you could throw down on your gaming mats, check out this playlist.
बाय